Hello, and welcome to the breakdown for the CGI Sharks in the Streets video. I made a very big mistake and deleted all of my project files for this video. Luckily, I still have the footage, so I'm literally going to restart, do a whole shot again from start to finish, and then just show it as I go along. The video received some really nice comments and a couple of people made some requests about how to do the thumbnail and to do like a workflow between Blender and Nuke. If anyone wants to see a video on how to do the specifics, I can do that. But I think for now, I'd rather keep this video a bit shorter and just sort of do a basic idea of what I did. So we jump into the editing software and I exported my plate as an EXR. Then the next step is jump into Nuke and we understort the footage. I just use a technique called line analysis, which is where you draw some lines onto the frame and tell Nuke where the straight line should be and it will do its best to unbend the footage and make those lines straight again. So you can see the difference here if I turn that on and off. And then once it gets undistorted, it's actually moving some of the pixels further off the edge of the frame. So we essentially have a larger image now because it's been scaled up slightly to straighten the lines. Okay, so now we have our undistorted footage. I'm going to do a camera track in Nuke and it looks like those points are sticking nicely. Let's create an actual piece of geometry for the floor. So if we create a card and then I usually plug a checkerboard into the card and this usually helps to see if it's tracking a little bit better. And then we can merge this over our undistorted footage turn the mix down to something a bit lower and then just try and vaguely line up the cards. I'm just going to change the rotation a bit. So then next up, we want to start sending stuff to Blender to do all the CG. And this is where I did one of the things to speed up my workflow a little bit. I made a custom gizmo, which is like a custom version of the right geo node in Nuke. And what I did is in the section where it saves the file, I essentially said, work out where the script is saved, then go up a couple of layers to where it has the Nuke and Blender folders, go into Blender and then go into the camera tracks folder and save this as a camera track. So literally all I have to do is press Alt W, call it whatever shot it is and press execute and then if I go to that shot folder go into blender camera tracks there's the camera so it's literally like three clicks it's amazing cool so next we're going to jump into blender let's bring in our camera track the trick to making the shark animation look really good and also really easy is there's no rigging at all I use something called a curve modifier you just get a curve so I'm going to use a NURBS curve and you basically just create a wiggly path that you want the shark to follow and you go on the shark go to modifiers add modifier curve and set it to the curve. And then literally set a keyframe for location at the beginning, go to the end of the sequence and then line the shark back up with the end of the curve, like that. Add another keyframe. Then if we look at it through the camera's view, you can see we have a shark animation. So render layers, I've got one for the shark and then one for the floor. Put the shark in a new collection or a collection called objects. And then I'm gonna put the floor in a new collection called shadows. And then I'm going to create a new render layer called shadows. And then in shadows, I'm going to set the shark to be set indirect only, which means it's not going to render, but it will be able to cast shadows. And then in the shark render layer, I'm going to set the floor to be a holdout, which basically means if anything goes underneath it, then you won't be able to see it. So the next trick is I downloaded an add-on for Blender called Overscan. It's an add-on that just allows you to render outside of the camera's border. So like I was saying in Nuke, how the lens distortion meant that we'd created a bigger image than what was actually in the frame. We basically want to render the same amount on the CG, which is 1950 by 1097. So if I go into the output settings, this is where the add-on kind of installs itself. I go use overscan and then I type in 1950 by whatever it was. So normally I just like to render a frame and just double check everything's working as it should be. So we've got the shark there and the shadow is rendering on the floor there. So once I know everything's working, then I'm going to hit render animation and render the whole sequence. Okay, cool. So the render's finished. Let's jump back into Nuke and comp it. We've got the shark and then the shadow underneath. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, just apply the lens distortion back onto these two renders. All you do is duplicate the lens distortion node you use to undistort the footage and then untick undistort, which is going to do the opposite and redistort the footage. Then you change image to displacement, which means it's not going to actually distort the image, but it's going to output an ST map that you can use to redistort it. And then if we use the ST map node, that's going to apply the lens distortion to our CG shark. So the first thing I did is use the alpha from the shadow catcher to grade the floor down, which just gives us a bit of a shadow. And then next to comp the shark, I actually made a template. So I called it shark shader. This is what it looks like. This is just a shader rebuild. And I knew that I was going to be doing this for each of the shots. And I made it into a template so that I didn't have to just recreate this node tree every single time. So it just spits out all the different passes. So we've got the diffuse and the glossy, and we've got direct, indirect, and color for each of these. First thing I usually do is just get the black and white levels to be roughly the right place. 
Next, I just went in and sort of looked at it. So in this, I think the specular was a bit too much and specular is just the reflections. So I go in and just grade down the glossy parts a little bit. And then I want to bed the colors in a little bit as well. So I think the shark is possibly a little bit green compared to the environment. Maybe lose a little bit of the saturation as well. And then once all the colors and everything are matching, I go in and sort of apply my defocuses and soften and everything. Usually for CG stuff, I always add a bit of a soften filter, just like 0.2 or something. I'm gonna apply an edge blur onto this as well. Uh, then obviously a defocus because the, the shark is not always exactly in focus. Uh, then another one I always do is a bit of light wrap because we've got a very strong source coming from behind here. So you would see some light wrap and then plus this on top of the CG and then just sort of mix it back to a very minimal amount. Then we want to apply our lens distortion to this part of the CG as well. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how I composited some CG sharks onto the streets of London. It's a really simple setup, as you can see. A couple of them had like a couple of extra little bits, but this was pretty much it. There was a comment here from NJ, just asking if I could show how to create the thumbnail. It's really, really simple. So I just exported a PNG of the shark when it's kind of close to the camera and then a background here. And then I jumped into Photoshop, did a little bit of grading because the background was currently in log, scaled the shark up a bit. And then the trick to get the white outline was just, I did edit stroke and then I did like 12 pixels or whatever it was. And you just get that white outline around the shark. And then I think I might've added a drop shadow or something onto the text as well, just to make it stand out a bit better. So there you go, NJ. That's how the thumbnail was made. It's a masterpiece, as you can tell. So there we go, that's a breakdown for the shark video and a basic overview of the compositing workflow and pipeline from Nuke to Blender and vice versa. If you have any ideas for effects you want to see, I'd be really interested to hear them, so put them in the comments. I think it would be really cool to start making subscriber-suggested themes for the effects videos. So yeah, see you next time.